businesses need to plan for when things go wrong and have procedures in place to deal with the unexpected, like natural disasters, um, human made disasters, um, and all kinds of security incidents. So all of those things actually fit under the broad category of contingency planning. And so we're going to talk about some of the specifics here. So business continuity planning is the overall planning within an organization for how to deal with adverse conditions. So if something is um, not ideal for the business, how does the business deal with those, those situations? And that includes a huge scope of things. Disaster recovery planning is more specific to the IT and it's about how you recover IT after a natural or a human disaster. Uh, and incident response planning is around how you um, detect and mitigate the security events that are happening. Um, so events that could compromise your actual security. So business continuity planning um, produces a natural business continuity plan um, and that should describe the procedures it, that, that you use in order to continue operations under those adverse conditions. So you, you build this plan that basically has some, some procedures to follow. And the aim is to be able to recover or maintain business operations after an event that could impact operations. So it's not just about cybersecurity, it's about just anything that could, um, you know, could go wrong basically and how you deal with it. Um, and part of the business continuity planning is having predetermined um, like aims for what's important and what you get at, what you, what level of operations you aim to um, put back in place at what time um, and within what time constraints you're going to do that. So in the business continuity planning, uh, the adverse conditions could be everything from natural disasters, floods, earthquakes, tornadoes, uh, theft, vandalism, fire, explosives, supply chain interruption, worker strikes, disease, uh, IT problems. So that could include security incidents. Um, and the response to that would typically be under the incident response plan. Uh, in terms of investigating specific um, security like attacks, for example. Um, but the business continuity plan as a whole is not specific to IT. It covers all sorts. So we're, we're going to quickly look at analysis, solution design, implementation, testing, and maintenance of a continuity plan. Um, and the impact analysis is looking at um, which process is mission critical and then determine the recovery requirements. So what's mission critical? Well, you have to ask the question about um, whether the risk of disruption is acceptable. Um, are there laws in place that mean that we need to, you know, maintain certain things first um, or specific priorities or mitigations that we need to have in place? For example, fire safety, there will be like specific, um, you know, fire safety rules that need to be followed. Um, is the cost of implementing the recovery plans higher than the cost of the disruption? So, you know, there's always dis cost um, trade-offs to be made in terms of what you actually put in place based on what the risks are and the likelihood of those risks and the likely cost of, you know, not mitigating them. Um, and there's, um, you know, part of that process is prioritizing what the processes and assets within that organization are which things are mission critical, for example, versus, you know, things that um, are less important. So the, so doing the impact analysis um, also involves determining the recovery requirements, um, and that includes business requirements and also technical requirements. So recovery, so these are two important um, pieces of terminology for you. Recovery point objective is the point that the organization is returned to. So the amount of data that could be lost, for example, that you've not backed up. So for example, if you take do a full backup once a day, then the risk is that if at the end, if you do that at the start of the day and the incident happens at the end of the day, then you've lost one full day's worth of data. Or do you run a backup every hour, you know? Um, but there's obviously a cost 
um, associated with that in, in some some way. Uh, recovery time objective um, is how long you are. It's acceptable for the services to be down for. So, for example, if a whole building gets destroyed somehow, then how long until we want to be able to continue operations in another building? Or if you've if a website's been defaced and you've been hacked, how long until you need to get the website back to its original state? So the, the answer to these kinds of questions will obviously dictate the solutions that you design in, um, to mitigate the threats. So part of the process is documenting all the possible threats, even the unlikely ones, uh, especially things like some of the most disastrous are you know, fairly unlikely to happen, but you need to have plans in place for when they do happen so that you know, uh, when, when those things are happening, what you want is to have a well thought out um, response. You identify the threats that would pose critical impact, and then you design solutions that fulfill the recovery requirements. Um, so you need to think about the organizational structure and the process, that will be followed in order to do the recovery. So for example, um, you, you might have a secondary site. Uh, and then the, on the technical side of things, you think about backups, the synchronization of backups to your secondary site. Uh, think about the network and the telecommunications of your um, secondary site. Uh, and how much work would actually be involved in spinning that up as being an alternative to your primary site. So on the technical side, uh, the business continuity plan will typically include a disaster recovery plan. So that's the technical plan to recover the IT services in an emergency. And the incident response plan, which is how you respond to individual threat events like a cyber attack. So that includes events that don't interrupt business operations. Um, and that's potentially a wider scope than the business continuity plan itself. But they're very closely related. <clears throat> so then we need to implement all of those um, measures. We test them, for example, we running, run drills to make sure that the procedures can be followed successfully. Um, for example, to restore backups. Uh, if you have backups, but you've never checked that you can restore them, you could be in for a very nasty surprise when you have a security problem or some kind of disaster happens and you're not able to actually restore from those backups. And um, we need to make sure that the um, business continuity plans are actually maintained and verified. So, so you know, if, if your procedures start to gather dust and, for example, rely on specific roles within your organization, which then move on or people that were in those roles leave and they never get refilled, then those procedures need to be updated and make sure that whoever's in those positions knows about the procedures. And so the disaster recovery is a subset of the business continuity planning that focuses on the IT systems. Um, obviously, many or most um, businesses are relying on their, their information technology or their, their um, computers and networks and systems in order to actually conduct their business. Very few, I guess some retail stores, might be able to handle not being have access to, the compu to computers. But when something goes wrong with the IT infrastructure, often a lot of businesses will have huge problems. So what are the IT requirements of um, brick and mortar retailers? Well, there might be less, but there's still a good chance that they still have you know, the stock management, um, point of sale, all that sort of stuff. Online retailers, obviously critical, large corporations, office blocks. Um, basically, if you Think about most businesses, there's, there's a reliance on IT. So the disaster recovery, um, the IT availability involves both the data availability and systems and services availability. So what happens when the computers are down? What happens when the network's down? Um, is everyone just going to go home? Um, I, I've been in a workplace where we relied heavily on all, so I was a um, software engineer and we had a, a the, basically the network went down and there was, there was literally nothing to do without the internet. Like all of 
everything was even our source code control and everything there's very little to do so basically everyone went home um, but you know this is something that you need to plan for if you've got a whole office full of people that can't work then that's quite a big quite a big problem um, what about access to the internet cloud computing is becoming popular and we're outsourcing a lot of stuff onto cloud computing so if, if the access to the internet goes down again um, we might not be able to actually do the business you know it's hard for a business to continue if you can't actually do do anything um, so IT is typically said to aim for 99.999% nine, availability which is known as the five nines so the term uptime refers to how long your system's been running for, and downtime is how long systems are unavailable for. So in order to meet the five nines, you are <clears throat> only allowed to be have your systems unavailable for 5.26 minutes per year, which is works out to be about six seconds a week. So if you are actually aiming for five nines, it's quite difficult to maintain, you need to have good um, you know server infrastructure with plenty of load balancing and the ability to do maintenance without taking services down essentially or to be able to do it very quickly uh, restarting servers and things um, obviously can take longer than six seconds to restart a server so you need to have redundancy and um, load balancing so uh, and that that but the um, the five nines is often um, might not include the um, scheduled downtime. So there's the asterisk. So you can some companies will say we meet five nines availability, but that will um, ignore the fact that they take their systems down every every weekend for an hour potentially. So there is a distinction that's made between an accident, unintended downtime and intentional downtime. So. Recovery time is how long uh, it takes to recover, um, and obviously, the the amount of availability that's required for a specific organisation is going to depend on what that organisation's needs are, um, and if they are just running an information website uh, and their servers are down for ten minutes, um, it might not make a huge difference if that information is um, not is is um, available elsewhere, for example, or if the people that are likely to access it are, don't have any choice but to wait, um, then that's less critical than, for example, Amazon's um, main store website going down. Every five minutes that store's down is potentially huge amount of losses that they would lose in terms of, um, you know, sales. So disaster recovery involves um, planning to prevent the disasters. So using redundancy, for example, detect when a disaster happens and recover or um, continue IT infrastructure after the event. So you have plans in place that can fulfill the recovery point objective and recovery time objectives. And some of the prevention techniques we can use is like redundancy. So we can use mirrored um, data or services. We can use RAID, so like a redundant array of independent or um, inexpensive disks. Um, we can um, have backup power supplies in, for example, as redundant power supply, so that when the power goes down, a UPS um, uninterruptible power supply basically kicks in and keeps the servers running for a, for a little bit of extra time. We use failover, so that when one service goes down, a redundant one's used instead. Um, we use security controls like access controls, admin policy, physical controls, anti-malware, all the stuff we'll talk about separately. But we need all of that stuff in place to actually prevent. Um, you know, prevent being hacked basically, prevent all the different security incidents that will happen if we don't do security proper, properly. Uh, and then we have recovery techniques uh, like backups. So we've got data backups, so that's off-site and or on-site backups of the actual data that we hold. Um, and that could be directly stored locally or via a network. We store it somewhere else, maybe even in the cloud, you know. Um, we have service backups, so we have um, potentially extra servers that are on standby waiting to kick in. We might synchronize um, potentially to an outsourced website. So it might be that we run most of our websites on our own systems, so we have a backup 
kind of like cloud-based system that's available, you know, if it's needed. Um, we have backup servers in, in place. Um, and we obviously need to have the procedures in place to be able to restore networks and systems if we need to. And that includes the hardware. Uh, you know, what happens if this, these hardware, you know, the hardware is destroyed? Um, you know, what do you do in the meantime? Maybe it's you make an insurance claim, but what do you do while you're waiting for, um, you know, for that to happen? Um, and then, the, and that includes the hardware and the software and configuration. Have all these plans in place. You might have a secondary site. Um, so, a hot site is where you basically have a, a site that's just basically fully equipped and it's ready to go live immediately. Um, and that could include, for example, like a cloud-based infrastructure where you keep a backup of all of your databases and things, and then it's just ready to basically flip a switch so it's so it's available. Or you might have a warm site. Um, where it's ready to go live at a reduced capacity at some point if it's when it's needed or a cold site which is that you've got a plan but in order to actually get it working there's a bunch of work that you would have to do so it might be that um, you know you've got your backup in one place and you've got some procedures if you really needed to you could get that server running on some other infrastructure or on some secondary site uh, whether it's in cloud-based infrastructure or whether it's um, just like local in another office, for example, and um, you know so that would be a cold, cold site. So, um, so those are um, some of the most important points around contingency planning, and so that included um, business continuity planning, um, which is the overall business um, plan uh, for when things are when there's adverse conditions, which can mean all sorts of things. There was the um, disaster recovery planning, which is around how we get our IT infrastructure back up when something bad happens. So when if a server's lost, for example, how do we like get back up and running? And we've got incident response plans, which is around how we uh, monitor for security events and plan to res respond to those events. Um, and so incident response planning is closely related, but the scope is a little bit different to the um, business continuity planning, but it's close enough that uh, would normally be part of the same planning process that you would consider all these things.